In the early 1600s, natives known as the Lenape roamed the lands of what we now call Brooklyn. Little did they know that everything was about to change with the arrival of the Dutch. Their presence would set the course of a series of events that would lead to the Brooklyn that we know today. A 97 square mile borough of New York City. And even though it's been tied to the Big Apple for over a century, it has a rich, unique history as an independent city. To try and cover all of the numerous people, places, and developments here in one video is pretty much impossible. From the iconic Brooklyn Bridge to the Kandu Navy Yard, from Coney Island to Flatbush, there's a lot to this place. So in this episode of Local New York History, I'm going to do my best to try and sum up a place once known as Dodgerville. Like I mentioned before, the Lenape inhabited an area that stretched from the lower Hudson region to the Delaware Bay. When the Dutch arrived from the Netherlands in the early 17th century, initial relations between the two were generally harmonious. In 1624, the Dutch established New Amsterdam, and about 12 years after that, they moved across the East River and established a village they called Brokele most likely named after a town in the Netherlands. And there are still Dutch structures that survive today, like the Wyckoff House. Things became heated in 1664, when Dutch governor Peter Stuyvesant surrendered the colony to the English, Thank you. who came in and renamed the region the province of New York. As far as Brooklyn was concerned, it becomes part of a middle colony of early British America and it was one of five other settlements in the area in what was called Kings County that were unified under one jurisdiction. And there was only something like 2,000 people there. And they were a feisty bunch. It only took a generation or two before collectively these colonists of Great Britain would rise up and declare independence from the mother country. You making trouble? Yeah, I'm a troublemaker. I'm making trouble. The first official battle was the Battle of Long Island also known as the Battle of Brooklyn, it was ultimately the largest of the entire American Revolution. The British emerged victorious, but failed to destroy George Washington's army. Brooklyn falls under British control and remains so for the duration of the war. The Redcoats used prison ships anchored in Wallabout Bay, where in the end, more American captives would perish there than from all of the battles in the entire war. Got the out here, huh? In the post-independence era, Brooklyn really begins to grow. And in 1801, the New York Navy Yard was established and came to be known as the Brooklyn Navy Yard, or BNY. It outfitted some ships during the War of 1812, but didn't really get started until 1820 when it launched the USS Ohio. Around this time, Brooklyn was starting to evolve from an agricultural hub to an industrial one. Its population was growing rapidly, from around 4,000 in 1810 to around 15,000 by 1830. All of this growth was helped by the completion of the Erie Canal in 1825. It connected the port city to the Great Lakes. You also have the hot new Fulton Ferry steam route, and in 1834, Brooklyn is incorporated as a city, with George Hall as its first mayor. You also have the city's oldest department store around this time and the start of the Daily Eagle newspaper in 1841, although it was under a different name. You have a wave of immigration during this time, driven by events like the Irish potato famine, and lots of things are happening like the building of a city hall, some of the earliest baseball teams ever, and in 1855, Brooklyn absorbs some independent villages like Williamsburg, Bushwick, and Greenpoint. 
During this time, the city was a stronghold of anti-slavery sentiment, even though slavery was previously allowed there. Abolitionist sentiment was illustrated with the auctioning of a nine-year-old girl known as Pinky by Henry Ward Beecher. You also have activists like Booker T. Washington speaking about emancipation at the newly formed Brooklyn Academy of Music. And boy, did things not slow down. You have the Ridgewood Reservoir, Dime Savings Bank, St. Francis College, and the growth of a population to over 260,000. With the outbreak of the Civil War, the BNY was very important, making ships like the ironclad USS Monitor. And there's also regiments from Brooklyn, like the Red-Legged Devils. And these veterans and more were honored with things like the Cypress Hills National Cemetery. Right around this time, you have the Brooklyn Historical Society under a different name, and you should look to them for further information. After the war, you have The Birth of the Hot Dog by a German immigrant on Coney Island. It wouldn't be long before a guy named Nathan would come up with his own recipe. (laughs) There was a political boss in the area known as Hugh McLaughlin, and he did many things, Uh, But one of them was contributing to the creation of Prospect Park that was designed by Frederick Law Olmsted and initially opened in 1867. Two years later, you have the Gowanus Canal and several key developments like Ocean Parkway. In 1883, you have the Brooklyn Bridge, which connected the city to Manhattan. And this marvel of engineering transformed transportation and symbolized Brooklyn's growth. This growth was very evident at places like Coney Island, and the first American roller coaster was opened at Coney Island in 1884. It sparked a wealth of attractions, from racetracks to the Luna Amusement Park. In 1890, the battleship Maine was launched from the BNY, and eight years later, its explosion would help spark the Spanish-American War. Also in 1890, you have Brewer's Row flourishing in Bushwick and the rise of the Brooklyn Trolley Dodgers, a baseball team originally known as the Grays. They would settle on their final name as a reference to trolley cars that one would have to dodge around the city. In 1895, you have the Brooklyn Museum and a year later, the Brooklyn Public Library, not to mention Tootsie Rolls. Yeah, why don't you say so during dinner? We could have used a conversation. Brooklyn was busy expanding its territory by annexing New Lots, Flatbush, Gravesend, New Utrecht, and Flatlands, just before the entire city became one of five boroughs of the newly organized Greater New York City, the so-called Great Mistake of 1898. It's beautiful. I don't think it's a problem at all. By 1900, this borough had over a million residents, and was marked by urbanization in neighborhoods like Park Slope, Bedford-Stuyvesant, Crown Heights, Sunset Park, and Bay Ridge. And where did they get all this energy? Probably with the new, fresh, local bags of Domino Sugar. (laughs) The Grand Street Bridge connected Brooklyn and Queens during this time, while the Williamsburg Bridge opened as the second major span across the East River. There were all sorts of new transportation methods and routes popping up, like an underwater subway tunnel, and in 1909, the Manhattan Bridge, which led to the neighborhood of Dumbo, or down under the Manhattan Bridge overpass. You also have the Brooklyn Botanic Garden in 1910, and Ebbets Field in 1913. Over at the Navy Yard, they built the USS Arizona around this time, which was later attacked and sunk at Pearl Harbor, ushering America into World War II. But before that was World War I, where the Navy Yard played a crucial role building and repairing ships. The Roaring Twenties gave us the Coney Island Cyclone roller coaster, that's still in operation, by the way, And in the 1930s, the opening of the Prospect Park Zoo happens. And when the 40s came, you could rock and roll over at the Paramount Theater. Of course, during this time, you have World War II, 
where the BNY completed some remarkable repair efforts, like that of the USS Franklin, which ended up surviving a kamikaze attack. You also have the launching of an aircraft carrier and the USS Oriskany, an interesting upstate-downstate New York connection, because it was named after the Battle of Oriskany, basically fought in my childhood backyard. Get out of here. <laughs> That's right. World War II itself literally ended aboard a ship made at the Brooklyn Navy Yard. And after that, the origins of the credit card can be traced to Brooklyn and, of course, bazooka gum. Absolute dynamite. In 1947, Jackie Robinson breaks the color barrier by joining the Brooklyn Dodgers and would ultimately lead them to six World Series, winning one in 1955. Just two years later, the entire franchise would move to Los Angeles, but not before Mr. Potato Head was invented in Brooklyn. It's such fun to do, and so easy. The 1950s was a time of suburbanization with the rise of automobiles and highways. Then in 1964, the Verrazano Narrows Bridge was opened, connecting Brooklyn to Staten Island. It was the longest suspension bridge in the world at the time, and remains the longest in the U.S. Soon after that, the Brooklyn Navy Yard was closed. In the 60s and 70s, public housing projects were transforming Brooklyn's demographics. And culturally, in the 80s and 90s, the emerging genre of hip-hop was strongly influenced by local artists like the Beastie Boys and Biggie Smalls. At the dawn of the 21st century, getting past 9-11, things were still happening in Brooklyn. You have the return of professional baseball with the Brooklyn Cyclones. And even though the Navy Yard was closed, you have things like Steiner Studios popping up there. By 2010, the skyline of Brooklyn was transforming with iconic buildings like 388 Bridge Street. The return of Major League Sports to the borough happens in 2012 with the Brooklyn Nets coming to the newly opened Barclays Center and the population continuing to rise with over 2 million people at this point. By the way, there's so many famous people that were born in Brooklyn. I was born in Brooklyn. And because time is a factor, I'm just going to list them here. You have Mae West, Al Capone, Jackie Gleason, Mel Brooks, Larry King, Woody Allen, Joy Behar, Lou Reed, Larry David, Steve Buscemi, Tony Danzig, Jerry Seinfeld, Charlie Murphy, Eddie Murphy, Michael Jordan, and so many more. How about that? (laughs) In recent years, Brooklyn has become somewhat of a trendy place which has led to the driving up of housing costs. I guess that's just a byproduct of a place that's being dubbed the New Manhattan. With a name like that, it's truly becoming a twin city. And with that, we've pretty much reached the present. I'd like to dedicate this video to my grandmother, Nani Joyce, who was born and raised in Brooklyn. A place where the Dutch roots are still visible today. Have a good one. Since you're still here, I'd like to thank you for watching this video and just give you a heads up on what's next. I mentioned the Erie Canal before, and we're going to look at a place that arose specifically because of it. Annie, where did you live? I was born and raised in Brooklyn, New York, until I was 20. And then I got married and moved away.